And uh, let me read to you here about Geoffrey Lewis. This is, says, raised on the Lower East Side, uh, Geoffrey Lewis is well known for his comic book art. Get rid of that. Uh, he did the cover for the Mouldy Pictures debut album, as Carl pointed out. I think Carl's name actually may be Bloxham Mundy. Carl Bloxham Mundy, which is a grand name, because I thought it was, when he said Carl Bloxham Mundy, I thought it was like a name and a date. But I think it's actually just a name. And he says he's now part, not Kyle, but uh, Geoffrey, is now part of New York's thriving anti folk scene. His debut album, the last time I did Acid, I went insane. Another favourite, was re released last year on Rough Trade Records. Current single, Back When I Was Four, came out at the end of last month, again on Rough Trade. Just finished touring with Corner Shop. Jinder and uh, Ben are here in the audience tonight. And uh, I have to say, it was them who really brought Geoffrey's work to our attention. And there is an audience here in our Made of Our Studios, and they will make a noise to demonstrate the fact that they exist. <laughs> They're like sheep, so easily led, so easily led. Uh, many of our favourites here, but not alas, the envious sister. I was hoping that she would be here. If you listened to last night's programme, you know what I'm talking about. And Geoffrey hopes to be back in the UK later this summer to play a series of dates. Second album will be out at the end of this year, and maybe he's going to do some of the songs from that, or maybe he's not. I get the impression he's the kind of bloke who makes things up as he goes along. So uh, you're in business, Geoffrey. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks, John. Thanks to Corner Shop for doing all the stuff for me, and uh, to Herman Dune also for... Uh, talking me up on this show and thanks everyone for hanging out sorry you say you've got a heavy heart you say you've got a heavy heart You say you've got a heavy heart It's hard for you to start Carrying your heavy old heart You say you've got a heavy load You say you've got a heavy load You say you've got a heavy load Walking down the road Carrying your heavy old heart And you sure don't know Where you're going you sure don't know where you're going. You sure don't know where you're going. But I say that the sun don't know when it's glowing. Flower don't know when it's growing. A river don't know when it's flowing. You're doing better than you know. You're doing better than you know. Should I do another one after that? I think you should, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Fighting for survival is such a boring battle. When I get into my car, I want to drive out to Seattle where the used record stores have my better prices when I don't have a car and I don't have a license. Should I take another walk to the DMV? Get another learner's permit with a picture of me? I put it in my wallet along with my four dollars and the condom that's still in there that has probably expired. I leave home for New York, but New York is where I'm from. I'm just looking for a way to feel my life has begun. I'm living in the city where I'm working like a walrus But hey, I don't need your money, man, I'm gonna be an artist And I'm feeling like I wanna do whatever I feel inside Put it all on paper and I hope that people buy it And my only minor worry now is how to pay the rent But that won't even matter when I lose my apartment I'll really have no worry 
series I'll be just like a cassette That you've taped up the tabs of to put something new on it And when I hit record God only knows what I will be And if there is no God then it's a better mystery For survival, but I guess I must be winning And my story is so long I can't remember the beginning But am I an optimist or am I a pessimist? If I see that half full, half empty cup is half full of nothingness Babysitter said I was really smart When the lights went out, everything changed The radio music made me feel strange And I had a real bad dream about a gorilla in the bathroom And back when I was six and I took everything real serious And I thought that every song that came on the radio Was referring to strange sexual acts Because I thought I wouldn't know the facts And being small is hard and no one ever tells you how And back when I was eight, I'd sit outside on an old milk crate And look out at the world from the stoop across the street The boom boxes and the hot concrete And every Halloween they hung a million rubber skeletons across 9th Street And back when I was 12 or so, I swear to God I never felt so low Everyone but me was making out and eating cookies I had more than my brain could stand, I threw my life in a garbage can I felt so weird I had to disappear and crying suicide disease And then at 15 getting stoned felt good and sent me back to childhood And nothing ever mattered to me more than that but then 16 became eclipse and my brain became apocalypse I was lost and found and I've never been the same And back when I was 22 I left the best thing that I knew And I gave it up for fortune and for fame And I played like I didn't know how I shocked the world, I wowed the crowd But I deserved more than what they gave And back when I was 27 Still nothing had been forgiven Clay turns into rock and rock just sits so sitting on a crowded beach, I'd pretend I was a leech And I'd stick to things here and there for a little bit And then back when I was 31, I knew I'd become what I'd become There's nothing left to reveal and nowhere else to turn So shocked and withered, dumb and bitter and in need of a babysitter I'd gladly let my hand fall off and burn, burn, burn And then back when I turned a big 4-0, I realized just how much there was to go And I started to think being alone forever wasn't where it was at I took my head out of the window and taught myself how to love real fast I started talking about painting with a woman in a laundromat And back when I was 50 and my first wife had just left me I felt okay and I sang my daughter funny little songs And just when I thought the best was past I fell in love for real at last And it didn't even matter that it had taken me so long And back when I was 63 the public rediscovered me My comic books and albums had all become rare cult collector items And both my parents were deceased so that it See my records get re-released And I got a dog for the first time in my life And back when I was 74 My dog died and I got two more I still felt really good about my daughter And also about my girlfriend And I would sing and draw a little bit But mostly I would just wake up early And sit and hang out with the puppies And wish that I could live forever And back when I was 87 And my grandson had just turned 11 My woman was dead and my dogs were getting pretty old And my body didn't work quite like it should But overall things were pretty good I was getting decent royalties from the reissued comic books and records And back when I was 106 My only friend was one goldfish Everyone I ever knew was dead and gone And the goldfish never had a name And the neighbors thought I was insane and I flushed it down the toilet when I saw it floating upside down 
I'm back when I was 128 I'd sit outside on an old milk crate And look out at the world from the stoop across the street The boom boxes and the hot concrete And every Halloween they hung a million rubber skeletons across Ninth Street Every Halloween they hung a million rubber skeletons Every Halloween they hung a million rubber skeletons Every Halloween they hung a million rubber skeletons My brother Jack is going to play with me. We've been playing music together for a few years in our bedroom back in New York. And our friend Anders Griffin, who's uh, the most sought-after drummer in New York City because uh, very few people actually own drum kits in those little apartments. We've stolen him away for this tour this, these couple of weeks. We're really glad to have him here. And everybody in New York City is really miserable because they don't have a drummer for the next two weeks. And he's played one, he just told me he played one gig a week, at least, sometimes like three or four since September at least. And uh, Yeah, if anybody's an out-of-work drummer and uh, New York City's songwriting scene could use some more drummers. Uh, there's not much money. There's no money in it, but you'll meet some cool songwriters. Uh, this is a song about the worst thing that ever happened to me. The last time I did acid, I went insane. I'll have uh, we need a band name, really. Uh, we're so we're sort of Jeff Lewis and the Heavy Hearts is like the only thing that we don't totally hate so far. But there's like 20 others that we totally hate. There's some uh, surveys upstairs. Jack likes doing surveys, so and, uh, <laughs> if anyone has any good band name suggestions, please pass them on. Yeah. 
aspect of life that I selected was instantly and brutally dissected. I saw the horrible emptiness within the reasons behind everything. This is madness. All my dreams have been turned into psychedelic nightmares with Rosemary's baby pissing in my face and Tiny Tim sticking his moldy penis into my bleeding mind as he cries for the strength to repel the sanctimonious sounds of the white rock group, the Grateful Dead. Dead are my aspirations as I struggle for a feebly sweet-smelling breath of life while being choked by the Christianic gas passed by the most reverend Bishop George Walker Bush as he sauce it to us. Who in the name of the Lord now but I'm back from Texas. Secret desert pizza brother people building Texas tower tower pouring burning house the house the house the house the Why you can't 
understand why you look at me I don't understand why you can't let me be I slapped you around and you hit the floor And now I can't remember your name anymore Cause I found another girl And she's cuter and younger than you ever were She could kick your ass if you fuck with her She's put in bed and she calls me something Cause I found another girl And she's cuter and younger than you ever were And she could kick your ass if you fuck with her Swing where the wind blows static on the radio now. Bouncy fireflies, look at how the time flies, baby, and a wheelbarrow static on the radio now. Stayed up all night looking at the moonlight, saw another bat fly and a firefly die. No more creeps left, no more tapes left, no more time left, no more space left to think that the DJ left his booth from staring at the roof and a static on the radio now. Time flies like a narrow, I'll be a man tomorrow, the world is quiet, there's a rainbow on the TV. Stay awake, the teeth very long to go. My teeth away, the rainbow on the TV now. Take my teeth to the cemetery. Don't walk up the spiral stairway. Monkeys and babies are scary. My mom is not the teeth fairy. I think the DJ left his bed. I'm staring at the roof and it's trying to come away.
thanks to everybody for hanging out. Uh, big thanks to uh, Herman Dune, to Corner Shop. Uh, super big thanks to Seth of Doofus, one of the best bands in New York. Uh, they were with Herman Dune on the show, and uh, they actually did me the great honor of playing a song from my very first cassette from like four years ago. It was amazing to hear the of tape. Of course, up. thanks to Glenn and Jeff. And oh, yeah, everybody, everybody at Rough there. Trade who's super awesome, and Jan and Andy for letting us stay at, on their couches, and everybody else. Uh Dead air. There's gonna, I was warned that if there's any dead air, disco music came on automatically. So it does, is, this too. Is, this is what... Uh, All right. Five, six, seven, eight. I'm talking about the man. You're doing very well. Keep going. We're not. We're on all the right, air for another right. hour and two minutes. So you oh, know. Oh, good lord! Uh, but you don't have to do all of that because I'm here with records. But well, as long as you want to go, you know. Is that in tune? I just spent ninety dollars on a tuner because somebody said I desperately needed to uh, make sure I wasn't. T- uh, Brian Pilton, who's one of my favorite songwriters in New York, I'm always like telling him what to do with his songs, and he's always. I don't know. For some, we have this weird relationship where we're always at each other. Enough talk. Uh, more rock. Uh, 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 so anyway, he, he was like, you know what, Jeff, what you really need to do is get a tuner pedal. So I finally paid for it before we left for, uh, for England. So now I'm using it and I'm in tune. Wonderful. Uh, 
And walking up 23rd Street, I was tired and alone. It was late, my housemate would be asleep when we got home. The sign ahead glowing red said the Chelsea Hotel, where Sid Vicious and my friend drug dealer Dave once dwelled. The street was black under my feet, which continued their walking. Though I was vaguely interested in the folks behind me talking Two guys, maybe gay, wearing raver-type suits And a girl wearing glasses, who looked kinda cute Her hair was short and curly, she had a tattoo on her back Which I could see, cause her red shirt was sleeveless with straps But I only saw this later, not at my first glance But I could hear them talking behind me and as if by chance she was trying to describe a song I knew well Leonard Cohen's song about the Chelsea Hotel And I smiled a smile to myself when she said There's the song where he talks about someone giving him a head On a bed that's unmade and how the song was outrageous And that's when I got uncharacteristically courageous I could have left the three of them laughing and just gone on home But I turned and I faced her and I said, Leonard Cohen? And she was shocked and surprised, but she looked very happy That she now had a witness to back up her story She looked at me with her spectacled eyes And said, see, I told you, to the two other guys And my tale might have ended right there and then Except that we started talking about Leonard Cohen and how his lyrics were cool And how he sang so sincere That it must have been true And it happened right here I know usually off the bat People don't find me that great There we were laughing and strolling Like we could really relate And that we didn't talk about the headline It was sort of alluded And our conversation was better Because her friends weren't included And the guys were more into each other At least that's how it seemed to me And I heard the faint knocking of opportunity Oh, it's easy for me now Upon my looking back To think of all the things that I could have said To make me the Mac Just keep the sad truth in mind As I sing this to you That we really only talked for A minute or two And I never got her name And she never got mine But in those couple of short minutes We had a pretty good time And on top of that Well, you might not believe it uh, this is what she said to me next as I repeat it, that line about getting the blowjob that Leonard sings. She said it made her want to do naughty things. And right about then, I should have asked if she knew what the Chelsea charged if we got a room for two. But I didn't, and I know... <clears throat> didn't, and I know I'm a schmuck, I doubt it. <laughs> the only thing I did was write this stupid song about it. But if I was Leonard Cohen or some other songwriting master, I'd know to first get the oral sex and then write the song after. Cause you can practice writing songs about romance every day. But if you haven't loved, then you'll have nothing to say. We could have given each other head on Leonard's same unmade bed, but I was too shy to suggest it. And so instead, when the three of them stopped to look through a pub window, I said good night, although I hadn't quite meant to, and waved as we walked, although I wouldn't forget her, especially since she mysteriously said, see you later. So now every time I'm walking, I hope that we meet, and on purpose I always go up 23rd Street, where the sign ahead glowing red says the Chelsea Hotel, where Sid Vicious and my friend drug dealer Dave once dwelled, except that life doesn't work out the way it does in old songs, that's why we sing new ones to say what really goes on, and if I could see her again and we could pick up right where it ended, maybe I'd play her this song and maybe she wouldn't get too offended, but sit there a minute and I'll tell you why. There's more to this situation than meets the eye. You might think that it's sad and you might think it's pathetic, but I sing this song and that she'll never know it. But if you think for a minute about just what that means, then you'll realize it's actually a wonderful thing. But all around the world, there may be 
three folks singing tunes for the love of other people that they barely knew. And it puts a smile on my face, yes it do. And let me tell you that you ought to be smiling too. Because the next time you're feeling kinda lonesome and blue, just think that someone somewhere might be singing about you. Oh, who knows if I ever find her again, we'll see. This whole time she could have been singing about me. Probably not. But it could be. That was one. Uh, thanks. That was. Uh, uh, that was a couple years ago when I was living on uh, West Twenty Eighth Street and uh, in this hundred fifty dollar a month apartment I was hiding out in for a couple of years because my grandmother had moved out. We didn't tell them uh, that she had left and so I was sort of hiding there and hiding from security guards and stuff and for a couple of years with really cheap rent uh, which and then I finally got evicted and uh, things are just so tough in New York that uh, my brother and I just didn't really ha we're both out of school now and don't really know where to go we've been living in downtown New York for our whole lives and then at the beginning it was at the beginning of our lives that we can remember that is uh, it was a cheap area and it was you know, a whole bunch of artists and punks and cool people, basically because the rents are really cheap. And it was hell of a segue. I don't kill my momentum. It just doesn't even seem practical. And it's used to kill the momentum. So anyway, we're uh, uh, we're great job. We <laughs> so we're uh, the neighborhood had really changed a lot, and both of us are basically just living at home when we're not floating around, which actually makes it a good opportunity to come out and do tours when stuff like that comes up. Uh, and, uh, you know, we had been walking, uh, there was one time that was a particularly, uh, a particularly evocative, uh, experience of what had happened to the neighborhood was a couple of years ago and Jack and I were walking on East 4th Street, which is where our parents live and basically where we live. And we saw this new sushi place open up, which was sort of emblematic of the changes in the neighborhood. And sushi was something that had never been considered to, uh, be, you know, something cool by anybody who had lived there before. It was just, you know, eating rice and beans or, or whatever, you know, local uh, Puerto Rican food and stuff that was there. Um, well, uh, yeah, no no comments from the peanut gallery. <laughs> uh, and, uh, so we saw a cab so we saw this cab pull up, pull up outside of the sushi, sushi place. Right? I saw some and people this, get out of the cab. They got out of the cab and it was My like, okay, didn't cool. Quite see the people. There was this punk that was there. Hey, all right, you're on ruining the, the story. So all right, let's go. We were, uh, two, three, come on. One, two. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Taxi, Taxi cab punks gonna eat some sushi. Gonna eat some sushi all night long. Taxi cab punks gonna eat some sushi. Gonna eat some sushi all night long. Taxi cab punks gonna eat some sushi. Gonna eat some sushi all night long. Taxi cab punks gonna eat some sushi. Gonna eat some sushi all night long. Taxi cab punks gonna eat some sushi. Got the leather jackets on with the sex pistols patch on. Taxi cab punks gonna eat some sushi. Gonna eat some sushi. They like to eat sushi. Oh, taxi cab punks gonna eat some sushi. Gonna eat some sushi all night long. Well, goodbye to the old neighborhood. This is a new neighborhood these days, I guess. Game 
some other bunch of losers that's been covering that a lot lately and we're pissed off. What do you want to do? Uh, jeez. Uh, see if you remember how to do this. Uh -huh. <laughs> New song. Yeah. You want to hear a loud song or a soft song? Loud, soft. Who uh, said that? Uh, loud was the first thing I heard. Because uh, Herman Dune did a hell of a cover of that. We can't play that anymore after that. Yeah, that was With too Doofus. Good. Uh, well, this is the new song, uh, the Honor Dilly No LSD song. We, we just did this for the first time the other day. I hope we remember it. But as we played a few, I don't know, well, the song will explain right, yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. All my album's out, I played some shows, strange things happened, I'll have you know. Hey, you're Jeff Lewis, you like acid, right? No. People hear my acid song, seem to take it kind of wrong. Well, making druggy mentions has gotten druggy attentions. I want you to give me some, it's not my intention. But we don't want no LSD tonight. I played a show in Chapel Hill, some dude dressed like a daffodil came back. Show in Williamsburg, some dude dressed like a giant bird came backstage. We got a lot of stuff to do and a long way to drive. Thank you for the offer, man. Maybe some other time. We don't want no LSD tonight. Well, being drunk is fun, I guess, but being stoned makes me depressed. I can't do it. I did try ecstasy one time. Anders will be accepting hand-me-down cigarettes after the show, however. We also actually, uh, if anybody has any spare change in their pockets, we'd appreciate it being thrown down. I forgot to take any money to England, and we owe Anders like, for food yesterday and today. And John Peel says the check is in the mail for this. So. Uh, what, what's, what's the scoof here? Time? Time? Well, uh, it's, it's up to you if you want right, to keep well, going. I mean, what, uh, we've got another 45 minutes to go. Well, it's... Supposed to leave the audience one more, so I wouldn't want to do. I should be talking into the mic. Uh, uh, hmm, does anybody want to play keyboard on uh, on something? Because I uh, at spring. Uh, no, uh, at springtime might be cool with keyboard. We haven't rehearsed it really, but uh, it's just four chords. Where's Ben? I know he wants to do it. Um, or, uh, I don't know, we're, the disco is going to kick in any second here. Springtime. I, I don't want to do springtime without the keyboard. Uh, who's going to play keyboard? Let's do something else. Um, the, one uh, of the engineers play, plays keyboard. Andy can play keyboards. Come on, Andy, here. anybody? Yeah! This is, yeah. Uh, Keep talking, keep talking. <laughs> that disco music is lurking. Just. Uh, you come in in a minute. Give me a good sound. 
The bus goes to the bus stop. The one way sign points up. It's spring time, spring time. There's blue sky in a puddle. There's a bird on the ground, dog on a roof. Chirp, chirp, woof, woof. It's spring time, spring time. There's blue sky in a puddle.
playing keyboard. Thanks everyone Thanks, for hanging out. Thanks to John. Oh, there was one, there was one more thing I was going to cover, but I, it was the uh, Lionel Mole was an alchemist by profession, and he cursed the all airships oh, to rely on the fickle niche of piggish bladders. Oh, I, I was no, going to remember no. it all, but I, you know, I just... Uh, it was. It fell by the wayside. I want so you to know I didn't write that stuff. You know, I, I know, I know, okay. but uh, it was the uh, the amazing Nothing expectation it. of it that okay. was so inspired. Me. All right, but listen, thanks very much for doing this, and whatever your band's called, and uh, uh, our Andy Rogers on rather quiet keyboards, it must be said. Uh, Jeffrey Lewis live at Made Avail for Radio One. Let's hear it, uh, audience. <laughs> And welcome back anytime you want to come back to.